Hi, I'm Rose, and I make cute and useful things for D&D. Today I'm going to show you how to make a foldable dice tray out of leather and screw studs. A dice tray is great for protecting both your dice and your table surface. As well as stopping dice from rolling off the table and getting lost, it also prevents gemstones from chipping. Meanwhile, it protects table surfaces from sharp-edged metal dice. For this project, you'll need two pieces of leather or faux leather. This works best if your leather is on the thinner side, as you want it to be flexible. You will also need four sets of screw studs, some thick, dense cardboard or plastic card, and some strong glue. You'll also need a ruler, a craft knife, a hole punch, one especially for leather is best, but not necessary, a pen, a piece of scrap paper, and some scissors. To start, Cut both of your leather pieces to be the same size. The pieces should be square in shape and should be a minimum of five by five inches. I advise starting with one about this size, which is eight by eight inches. You will also need to cut your board to size. The board I'm using is a very thick piece of card from a piece of packaging I found. The backboard of a notepad or a sketchbook can also work quite well for this. You want something that's really sturdy. It should also be a square and it should be about three inches smaller than your leather pieces. This will allow for a one and a half inch wall on your finished dice tray. Choose which piece of leather you want to use on the outside of your dice tray and use a pen to mark one and a half inches from the edge around all sides. This will be where the board goes. Use your glue to stick the board in place. I use this multi-purpose contact adhesive for leather work as it's really strong but it's still quick to work with. Follow the instructions on the glue that you use to stick the board to the leather. This contact adhesive needs to be applied to both surfaces and then takes about five minutes to dry before sticking them together. Make sure you spread the glue evenly all over the surface using a spare piece of cardboard as a spreader to make sure that you're getting right to the edge. Once the board is stuck to the first piece, apply glue to the other leather piece and stick on top so that you have a double-sided piece of leather with the board sandwiched between them. You may find the edges don't align perfectly or you have a little glue on the edge, but don't worry about this. Once the glue is dry, just go in with your ruler and knife and trim each of the edges. I'm using a rotary cutter here, but a craft knife works great too. Make sure you trim each edge the same amount to keep the square shape symmetrical and the board in the center. Once trimmed, pinch one corner of the leather so that it makes a triangle. The bottom point should meet the corner of the board. Then use a pen to make a mark in the centre of the triangle. To make sure we get all the corners the same, we're going to make a template out of scrap paper to show us where to mark the remaining corners. First, punch a hole through the leather at the mark you made. Then lay the leather on top of the corner of the scrap paper, lining up both edges. Use the hole to mark a dot on the paper and then fold the paper diagonally in half so that the edges meet and use the hole punch to punch through the mark you made and then when you open out the paper, you'll have a symmetrical template. I also cut out a curved edge on my template so that I could round off each leather corner equally to neaten up the final result. Now using this template, line up the paper edges with the leather edges and mark the holes on every corner and then go ahead and punch each of the holes. Now it's time to add the screw studs. These studs are quite easy to find at craft shops, DIY stores, and online. They have two parts to them, a spherical raised stud and a flat screw for the back. Put the flat screw through the outside leather piece and screw the stud on from the other side. Each corner should have one stud and one hole. Use your craft knife to make a small slit going into each hole that doesn't have a stud. This makes it easier for the large stud to go through the hole, but keeps the hole small enough to allow the stud not to slip out. And you're finished! Simply push each stud through the hole next to it and assemble your flat pack dice tray. If you find any of the studs are a bit difficult to push through, just go back with your craft knife to make the small cut a little longer. Now you have a beautiful handmade dice tray that can easily pack flat for storage or travel. If you like this video, I'll leave a link to some more tabletop DIYs I've done in the past. You can find even more of what I make on my Instagram. The link for that will be in the description below. If you make one of these dice trays for yourself, tag me. I'd love to see them. Thanks for watching.